Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over some upcoming snowstorms for portions of the northern United States. We're going to be going over some of those upcoming snowfall threats for your area. And also we're going to be talking about later on where you could be dealing with some colder temperatures. And that's mainly going to be for the middle part of December onward and potentially into January. So we're going to be talking about all of that in today's video. Now uh, I know I said yesterday that I would likely make a follow-up video to that snowstorm over the Great Lakes and parts of the northeast that was going on and that might have happened uh most of the models have shifted to a mainly rain event so i feel like it wouldn't have been necessary for me to make an entire video just about that one event where the only areas that would have been seeing snow were higher elevations in the northeast so i uh, kind of scrapped that idea and i'm gonna actually end up talking about more snowfall threats that are happening later on probably within the next uh probably within the next five to ten days or so uh because we have a lot of snowfall so we have potentially up to two or three or maybe even four in some scenarios so we're going to be talking about that uh and i most likely will not upload again on that system uh we will cover it briefly in today's video but i probably won't make a dedicated upload again to that system just because of how uh how, how much it has changed and how much it has warmed up so here is the current national weather service page we have freeze warnings in effect for parts of coastal uh south carolina as well as coastal north carolina and coastal virginia we also see some red flag warnings in effect for the central United States with some, I believe those are, uh, I believe those are uh, high, uh, high uh, fire warnings or uh, advisories for portions of South Dakota there. I'm not quite sure, but I believe it is something to do with fire related weather. We also see some high wind warnings in effect for portions of Wyoming, winter storm, uh, winter storm warnings are in effect for portions of California and Idaho and some more winter weather advisories scattered through through parts of California, Oregon, and uh, Washington with some wind advisories further to the south and to the east of there. Now, here is the uh, three-day snowfall uh, totals and analysis, uh, and this is just basically showing you where snow has fallen, and this is only going to 8 a.m. Eastern Time this morning, so it hasn't covered what's happened after that, uh, so we, we have seen a lot more snowfall after that, but this is just giving you a general summation of what has happened, and you are seeing a couple of areas that that have picked up quite a bit of snowfall out of this event and this has mainly been lake effect driven you saw a little clipper system dive out of parts of canada and dip further to the south and to the east and that ended up bringing in some more lake effect and quite a bit of snowfall along with that uh, and a lot of areas saw their first flakes of the season maybe not accumulation but at least their first flakes of the season uh, later on today you might even see a little bit more in the way of snowfall now uh, that isn't to say that this November has been very cold or has been very chilly. You might have thought that uh, if if you didn't know what the rest of, uh, what, what the previous part of November actually looked like weather-wise, and we had a very very warm pattern. We were in a ridging pattern where we had high pressure draped across the southeast that brought up that warm air for portions of the eastern United States. And look at that. This is the past 17 days averaged out, and a lot of these a lot of these areas are closer to five to eight degrees above. Of normal and that is pretty record-breaking uh, depending on exactly where you are so uh, definitely has been a very very warm November but I don't think it'll stay like that and this is why now this is currently what your polar vortex looks like this is about 90 to 105 thousand feet up in the atmosphere so because of how high up that is in the atmosphere what you're seeing on your screen right now might happen within the next two weeks so it'll take uh, basically it's like a delayed temperature anomaly map so this blue is indicating your polar vortex that's your cold air and that's bottled up over portions of the arctic circle now what you want is for this if you like cold air you want this to kind of dip down either into europe which means that it'll eventually swing back around to the to north america or you want this polar vortex to split up where you have one part of the polar vortex split into europe and one part of the polar vortex split into the united states now this is right now here would be by november 28th look what happens you get an oval that starts to shape up this would still be a warm pattern now if we add 14 days to this because it's a two-week delay from what's actually going to happen this would probably be happening right around december around tw uh, de december 12th or so so it would be right around that time period and by this point it would still be a warm pattern for the east because most of that cold air is situated in the west but then look what happens and this has been in many of the model runs it starts to shift eastward again and you start to get more of that cold air dive into the eastern united states now this would be by December 
4th. So if you add 14 days to that, that's December 18th. Now, that means that we might have a cold Christmas, a maybe a snowy Christmas, depending on exactly how this plays out. And it will definitely be, uh, or potentially it could be, a cold later half of December, maybe going into January. We'll still have to see. There's a lot that still can change, but that's just something that I've been keeping my eye on. I've brought it up a couple times before, and it's just something that I really want you guys to pay attention to uh, because it could be a big factor into our weather pattern. And then here is what the CFS model is showing for the entire month of December, and you can kind of tell that it's tilted towards the eastern United States. Your trough would be somewhat like this if this were to set up. Now, here would be the GFS model and what it's showing. This is your first system, and that's that system that I decided to not make an entire video on, uh, but to kind of talk about a couple more snowstorms along with it. That's, this is your Great Lakes storm that was yesterday's main topic on that video, and we're going to go in 12-hour increments, then we'll look at the European model and what it's showing for this. You start to see a band of rain, a frontal system set up along parts of the central United States, and if we play this through, you start to see that band of rain kind of starts to uh, get a little bit more active. You start to see a lot more rain set up along that frontal system. Then as we get to Sunday, November 22nd, that band of rain has now become south, uh, southwest to northeast. You're seeing most of that rain for portions of the Great Lakes dipping down into the central plains. And as we continue forward, that frontal system is still setting up along portions of the central and uh, getting into the eastern United States. Maybe some snowfall for portions of the Adirondacks, parts of the Green and White Mountains in New Hampshire and Vermont and as we continue forward it starts to head up that upper level low by this point is in northern Vermont and into southeastern Canada it's bringing up a lot of that moisture out of the southwest and mainly parts of the south central United States this is what your, uh, your what this is what your stream of moisture kind of looks like uh, and we're seeing a lot of that rain set up along there you're seeing maybe some mixing of snow on the very northeastern uh, the very northeastern side of this system and then it's pretty much headed out by that point now here's what the Europe model shows for that same system more rain sets up for uh, areas between Indiana and uh, Kansas there and as we continue forward, that band of rain sets up a little bit further to the south. And as we continue forward into Sunday, uh, that band of rain only is expanding by that point. The European model wants to show a little bit of snow for southern Michigan, uh, potentially mixing in there. And as we continue forward, most of that cha changes over to rain. The only snow is left up, uh, left up for much of the uh, interior northeast. And that frontal system pushes upward here would be by Monday morning. And then as we get to Monday afternoon and into Tuesday morning, it's heading out of here. And it's pretty much all said and done with as we get to Tuesday, the 24th of November. Now, here's what the GFS shows for those snowfall totals from this storm. In the grays, that's anything to two, uh, to two inches of snow, two to six inches of snow in the blues, and then six to ten plus inches in those purples, pinks, and those lighter pinks as well. And you see some of those colors over the western United States. Overall, the storm only brought maybe closer to an inch or two of snow in some of those highest elevations according to the GFS. Here's what the Euro model shows. And it shows a little bit more for southern Michigan, which is a possibility. I think the GFS is a little bit more accurate in this scenario. Although you could see a couple flakes uh, at the start of this storm for southern Michigan there. But mainly it's going to be for that uh, northern New England region. Now here would be your next system and what it's showing. And the European model wants to actually show a lot more snow with this. The GFS doesn't uh, with the system. By this point, we're seeing a little bit of moisture start to set up over the central part of the United States. You have some energy throughout that. You have some very, very uh, uh, moisture-ridden air that's moving through portions of uh, the central United States. And that is going to continue. And you're going to see pretty much a plume of moisture move up into portions of the central United States. And this is not really a system. You have a little low pressure out in uh, an upper level low in Oklahoma and Texas. And then that surface low would be somewhere right around here in Oklahoma, but you're mainly dealing with a big stream of moisture that's coming out of portions of the Gulf of Mexico and heading northward and getting squeezed in, be in between this high out uh, to, the, uh, to the east and another high, which is out to the east so, or uh, out to the west, and it's getting kind of pushed up there. So we're seeing all that moisture uh, being uh, flooded into portions of Minnesota, Iowa, and areas further to the south of there, and because it's going to be a little bit colder, of course, as you 
you get further north some of that might switch over to some snowfall now this would be by tuesday november 24th here would be by the evening hours on tuesday some of the the heavier snow now moving into northern uh wisconsin and by the way this is not a forecast i'm just showing you what the models are showing when i do put out my snowfall forecast then you can kind of judge me on how well i did on that but this is just me showing you what i'm looking at and what i uh think may happen according to what the models are showing right now although this is purely speculation uh and we still need to get further evidence to kind of for me to make a forecast an official forecast on this now that system continues to move further uh, to further out to the east this would be right around midnight on tuesday getting into wednesday the 25th a lot of moisture setting up along the appalachians and then we're looking at much of that snow as you get further to the north and then uh that system continues to move north and eastward maybe some colder on the back side of that more snow on the northern side mainly rain however now here would be what the european model shows for this we don't see a lot happening by this point we are starting to see a little bit of energy although it's not depicted on this uh, image right now but you do have a little bit of energy spinning up through portions of the central United States you start to see that start to spin up over Kansas and Nebraska as we get to Tuesday here would be by uh, Tuesday night we're looking at a lot of snow for parts of the northern plains according to this and the, uh, the European model really went all out with this system and as we continue forward you start to see that system heads a little bit further to the east still a lot of uh, snowfall for portions of, of the upper Great Lakes by this point and then that continues to head eastward over northern New England you're looking at a little bit of snowfall by that point and actually a lot of snowfall as you get into northern Maine and New Hampshire where some of those snowfall totals and snowfall rates will be picking up by that point and this almost turns into a nor'easter uh, by that point and then that cold air lingers on the back side now here's what the GFS model shows and we're looking at a general one to two inches this is for both systems by this point so under an inch to two inches uh, maybe even three or four in some areas according to the GFS however here's the European model and yeah we're looking at maybe six to eight inches according to the European model in some areas and northern Maine and northern New Hampshire some areas might get up to two feet of snowfall so we'll definitely have to watch the system this could be a big powerhouse depending on exactly how this plays out the European model wants to show that the Canadian model kind of wants to show something like that the GFS really doesn't want to show uh, a system like that right now but we'll still have to see there is a lot of time for these models to change let's just look at one system this is too far out for the european model uh to show it yet but we'll just look at the gfs model and what it's shown because this is one that would show some snow for portions of the northeast uh so i i just thought i might as well show it with you guys so here would be by Friday, November 27th. Here would be by the 28th. We're dealing with cold air by this point because that system has already moved out. We have a cold uh, upper uh, upper level high pressure system that's moving through portions of the upper Midwest. Your trough would be somewhat like this by this point. You're seeing a little bit of cold air on the back side of this uh, nor'easter now moving up the coast. And I think this is an unlikely solution, but I'm just showing you the models. I just don't, uh, I don't want you to think that this is a forecast. This is mainly just me showing you the forecast the uh, models and kind of uh, compiling it all for you into one condensed video and just presenting you the information eventually I will make my official forecast on these systems if they still pan out now here would be by November 28th and then here's by the 29th and you do see some of those coastal areas getting into some of that snow and it's pretty much all said and done with according to this model as we get to the 29th here's what the GFS model shows for snowfall uh, and this is through all of those three storms and we're looking at maybe a uh, dusting to an inch or two uh, along that coastal area that saw snow so it's not going to be a big powerhouse even if that were to happen uh, and I think that's unlikely but it's definitely something that we want to keep in mind so that will wrap it up for today's video uh, please consider leaving a like uh, and subscribing as well as turning on notifications so you never miss a video when I do upload and I'll see you guys in the next video goodbye